It would be so simple if rain washed away our disagreements. If steady rain allowed us to have the clarity to be able to understand one another. If the rain would make our hearts inspire us to work together, to fix problems that began with choices made before most of us living in California were even born. To look at reality through a dispassionate lens. Regrettably, we seem to be right in the middle of a very strange season. In this fragile place that is California, it seems increasingly clear that no matter how much rain we get, the goal of allocating it equitably is elusive. Mired in selfish, indignant posturing by those who have money and power. Sadly, the consequences of accommodating that posturing have been devastating for people, wild salmon, and the ecosystem that supports it all. So what is so strange about this moment? Just a short time ago, fishing regulators in Seattle voted to completely shut down California's salmon season. This follows a surprise decline of the salmon on the Sacramento River. Well, after nearly three years of no salmon fishing being allowed because the number of wild salmon had dramatically declined, there's been a glimmer of an uptick in their numbers. Enough so that the federal agencies that determine such things told recreational anglers and commercial salmon fishermen that it's okay to drop your line in the water and go fishing. A huge relief for the rapidly dwindling number of families that depend on a healthy salmon fishery for their economic viability. Hallelujah things seem to be getting a little better. But wait, suddenly there's a new voice raised to protect and defend salmon. Welcome to litigation hell. You are looking at a lawsuit filed in federal court to overturn the government's go fishing decision, filed to prevent anyone from catching salmon, filed by, of all folks, the people that provide irrigation water to the east side of the San Joaquin Valley, the San Joaquin River Group Authority. In essence, they are saying that salmon must not be allowed to be caught in order to protect them. Huh? Well, it turns out that they are afraid that if salmon are caught, their numbers will fall and more restrictions on their agriculture irrigation water will be imposed. They say that the National Marine Fisheries Service violated their duty to protect the threatened Sacramento River fall run of Chinook salmon by allowing a full commercial season. In his nearly 30 years of fishing for salmon commercially, Larry Collins thought he had seen it all. The irony of who filed this suit to stop the salmon fleet from fishing is definitely not lost on the salmon fleet. The people that have created the problem and have devastated the salmon fishing industry are now trying to put an end to the salmon fishing industry because they know that we're the one industry that represents jobs. They can't say it's fish versus jobs because it's my job versus their job. They argue that water would have to be released for endangered salmon and that would have a negative impact to their agriculture and industrial customers. The authority is comprised of irrigation districts in the Central Valley, south of the Delta, and others including San Francisco. San Francisco abstained when the vote was held on whether to move forward with the lawsuit. 
perhaps because San Francisco knows how important it is to the salmon fleet that call Fisherman's Wharf home, that it's time to go fishing. These people have been overdrafting this system for 50 years. When the commercial salmon industry and the sports salmon industry is gone, then the only people that will care will be the radical environmentalists. I need the environment to be very healthy for me to go make a living. I'm not a radical environmentalist because I kill things for a living. Yes, he did say that. He kills things for a living. But getting back to those irrigators, as we look at our favorite video clip of Westlands, we wonder aloud how much the Westlands Water District encouraged and supported this move. After all, Westlands has never been shy about making legal and political moves to get what they want, and they take advantage of opportunities to make their case whenever they can. Westlands General Manager Tom Birmingham unleashed his anger to a congressional committee hearing in Fresno recently, anger over efforts to follow science and the law to protect endangered salmon, telling the hearing that the protections have been costly to Westside agribusiness. A, a lot of attention has been paid to most two recent biological opinions, with good cause. As an example, last year those two biological opinions cost our two water projects by themselves in excess of a million acre feet of water. There is no more water. Every drop is spoken for. You can't keep planting permanent crops. You've gotten way more than your share of water, and you've got to give some back. I've heard comments that, well, in 2009, the uh, farm economy in the state of California was doing very well. And in 2009, most of the farmers south of the Delta got 100%. Water service contractors are getting 75%, and the refuges are getting 100%. That suggests some imbalance. It was worse than that. In 2009, refuges got 100% of their contract supply, and we got 10%. We interrupt Mr. Birmingham's impassioned posturing to point out that Westland's contract with the federal government clearly specifies that their water deliveries are not guaranteed, ever. So his assertions of water lost for environmental protections may be accurate, but contractually expected. And shame on anyone who dares to point out that even in the recent drought years, many had profitable harvests. I, when I hear the comments about the agricultural economy in 2009 and the, uh, the fact that <coughs> most of the farmers got their water, it reminds me of the joke. Well, this is not a joke, and it is not a game. The, the comments that dismiss the impacts associated with the regulations <coughs> or resulting from the regulations that we've experienced for the last 20 years are offensive. They are offensive. Offensive? Oh my. Well, look at this fact. According to the 2009 Fresno County Agriculture Department annual crop report, gross farm income fell only 4.5% from 2008 to 2009. Now, 4.5% is hardly a startling drop-off in production and may simply be attributable to market forces oversupply, or declining demand for certain commodities. But by any measure, producing $5.3 billion in farm products is certainly overall a healthy, profitable output. It makes the notion of a man-made dust bowl even more ludicrous. Meanwhile, apparently water irrigators south of the Delta, including the bullies of Westlands, have no trouble dismissing the tragedy of three years of 100% unemployment in the salmon industry billions of dollars in lost income and taxes, and the water equivalent of more than 13 million acres of fallowed land. The chutzpah that these guys are showing, suing to stop the first salmon season in four years, is absolutely unbelievable. I can't believe it. I thought I'd seen it all. The irrigators, with or without Westlands actively encouraging them, have chosen to play a cruel hand in their unrelenting demand for water. They've put their cards on the table, and once again they tell anyone who does not ante up to play their game to buzz off. Pathetic behavior, 
in the guise of giving a damn about salmon and communities in two states that need Central Valley fisheries to recover and rebound. At the beginning of this program, we said it's been a strange season. Here's another example. For the four years and the more than $140 million spent on the BDCP, the Bay Delta Conservation Plan, designed to fix the tragic condition of the Delta, it seems that the plan is even in worse shape than the Delta itself. A few months ago, the Westlands Water District bailed on the process. We too, we too uh, thought that the BDCP was going to be the path to resolving a lot of long-time contentious issues, uh, improving the water supply, improving the ecosystem. Uh, and But today, personally, I'm uh, of limited op optimism on that front. And now the federal government's review of that effort essentially said that there is nothing behind the curtain. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. The great end of has spoken. The National Academy of Sciences review of the BDCP plan stated clearly that the whole effort has been manipulated from the start by south of Delta water irrigators and Southern California urban water districts manipulated to get the outcome they wanted, a peripheral canal, a tunnel, or some other type of conveyance, to move water around the problem-plague delta so it can be used by agriculture in Southern California, despite the consequences to the very ecosystems that they are so loudly proclaiming that they want fixed. We should not abandon science, and that is precisely why the California Department of Water Resources and the water agencies that you see represented here are in court fighting the biological opinions because they are not based on science. The court has found that. The National Academy of Science has found that. To pretend that the amount of water that we take out of the Delta has no effect on the health of the system is disingenuous. And the science clearly shows that the volume of water is fundamentally related to the health of our aquatic ecosystems and their fisheries. When one special interest who has one particular concern says, it's not my problem, I have no effect on this, it's everybody else's problem, I think alarm bells ought to go up and we ought to look a little more carefully. I would request that you conduct oversight and then look at ways not to amend the Endangered Species Act, because, but to provide direction on how that act is going to be implemented so that we can survive over the course of the next five to ten years while we are pursuing long-term solutions. We can't water all of the land that we could potentially grow crops on. There's not enough water, and that's the reality. And so we have to make hard decisions. And Westlands isn't alone in having land that could be brought into production if the money or the water or the labor or the infrastructure existed. We live in a state with constraints, and failing to recognize those constraints means we're going to continue to make bad decisions. It's clear that Westlands and the other south of Delta irrigators want a peripheral canal. And it's clear that the National Academy of Sciences review process, a process that they initiated by pleading with California's senior Senator Dianne Feinstein to make it happen, is coming back to bite them. We wonder what's next. And as we wait, we once again leave you with this undeniable truth. It's time for salmon water, now.